Spider-Man 3. You're finally in it. This is the final Spider-Man film that I'm going to review until No Way Home comes out. I reviewed every single Spider-Man film that theatrically released from the first Sam Raimi all the way to Far From Home. And now we are covering Spider-Man 3, the craziest of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. The one that, despite making the most amount of money, basically killed the Sam Raimi franchise. So, it's left out of the trilogy. Now, the story goes like this. Peter Parker is now enjoying the time of his life as Spider-Man. He has the girl of his dreams, though he seems to be a little bit different here. He seems to be full of himself, thinking that everything is alright. And the suit that bonds with him, the symbiote suit, basically amplifies that to anger after he figures out that the killer of his uncle Ben is still out there because who he thought was a killer in the first movie was actually just a proxy and the real killer Sandman from Marco played by Thomas Hayden Church is still out there he's trying to look for money to save his daughter all around the Green Goblin is trying to figure out a way to kill Peter Parker. Harry, Harry Osborn is trying to get revenge on Peter. And then he has a concussion. Um, yeah, this I cannot explain this movie's story without it feeling too complicated. Because this video is going to be an hour long if I had to explain it. And this is where the problem lies with this film. The story itself is so convoluted. There are so many storylines it tried to juggle and it doesn't do a good job at juggling any of them. They all have great individual scenes. My favorite which is The Birth of the Sandman with some incredible visual effects and music. It is by far one of the best moments in the Sam Raimi trilogy. And so is the fight between Sandman and Spider-Man for the first time. So is the fight in the final battle and then the sewer. But these are just moments. As a story that's supposed to connect these great scenes together, the story does a terrible job at juggling it all. And that's mostly due to the producers wanting to include Venom in a story in which Sam Raimi did not want to do. And you could tell that he's trying his best to please and abide by his producers' wishes while also trying to make a good movie. And he just couldn't because Sam Raimi is a director that needs his creative freedom. I will say that the themes of the film are very cohesive and do relate to each of the characters very well. And at least by the end there's something that you can learn and something that the characters have learned from the rest of the film. But as a story itself, it is really, really messy. But by God it's a lot of fun when Nemo Peter comes around. This film is the silliest of the trilogy. It's the most memeable, and that is because of Bully Maguire. Toby's performance as Bully Maguire is off the charts weird, but entertaining. And it helped me enjoy the film a whole lot more than I should have. Uh, Topher Grace's Venom, despite being miscast, I will say the character itself is rather handled respectfully more closely to its comic counterpart than the Tom Hardy version. But again, it has a problem with showing too much of Topher's face 
in the final battle. Um, Thomas Hayden Church does a great job as Sandman. Uh, James Franco is great, but his character is very underwritten, and his payoff is very lackluster when you consider the amazing build up and the amazing cliffhanger that second film left off in for that character. So sadly we we're never gonna get a good conclusion for that. Um this was a film that tried to juggle so much. And while at the end of the day it is entertaining and I can enjoy myself as a guilty pleasure Compared to the first two, which are great films, great storytelling, yeah, this is a definite step down for the franchise, and it took Sony a long time to figure out how to once again make a great Spider-Man film. So, overall, I would say it's a fun movie, but... It's not that good of a movie also. I could understand why you'll like it. And I can understand why you'll hate it. And I can understand why you're in the middle. I can understand how many people will feel differently about the film. So for that reason, I'm going to give Spider-Man 3 a B-. I'm reluctant, I'm reluctant to give it a negative grade because I did enjoy myself throughout the film. And it is a childhood movie in my, in my mind. So, a bit of nostalgia helped it out, but a critical standpoint, this film is terrible. But an entertainment standpoint, it's just right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.